Hi, I'm Dean Carfora, and Hawk Talk's coverage of the Cold Spring Harbor High School's presidential debate begins right now. Good morning. I'm Caroline Farahani, and I welcome you to the 2016 Cold Spring Harbor Speech and Debate Team's presidential debate contrasting the major economic and national security issues of the two major presidential candidates, not their personalities. The debaters featured may or may not support the candidates whose policies they're asked to defend in this debate. We would like to thank the administration and staff for allowing us the opportunity to explore a few of the important issues with you today. In order to allow for a clash on the issues, you were asked to remain silent throughout the entire debate so that we and you can focus on what the two teams have to say. The other moderators, Catherine Kay, Henry Hubble, Matt Cation, and I will introduce the main speakers for each segment of this morning's debate. We will begin the debate with a consideration of which candidate will grow, grow the U.S. economy more. Rafi Sana will present the economic policy proposals of Secretary Clinton. Secretary Clinton will make effective and innovative steps to better the economy for the people, not just the super rich. Her economic principles of lowering taxes for U.S. citizens and making the rich pay their fair share will benefit our economy and citizens, and securing our crumbling infrastructure will produce high-paying jobs and a better quality of life. These factors can alleviate the growing burdens on the American economy. America currently has a system in place where the top get all the breaks. Often the wealthiest citizens receive the smallest income tax percentage than the middle class, who has been losing money since 1973. According to the IRS, the top 400 most affluent people only pay 20% of their income tax, only 0.3% higher than a worker who is making $75,000 yearly. This trickle-down economics has no part in Secretary Clinton's economic plan. She is preparing to implement the Buffett Rule, an increase in income taxes to 30% for citizens making over a million dollars a year, only protecting 0.3% of all taxpayers, but raking in $36 billion yearly. The minimum wage has been painted as an ill-fated and poorly thought out plan by many conservative leaders. However, it has been clearly proven on multiple occasions to be effective by independent economic studies from major economists. More than 600 economists, including seven Nobel Prize winners, wrote, research suggests that minimum wage could increase, increases could have a small stimulative effect on the economy as low wage workers spend their additional earnings, raising demand and job growth and providing some help on the jobs front. Secretary Clinton has stood on the forefront of these efforts with the intention of raising the national minimum wage to $12 an hour. Clinton will push for works as infrastructure update and repair, which, has been given, which will give the national economy the jolt it needs. Eisenhower's interstate highway system to FDR's CWA show that there has been bipartisan agreement that public works can lift many burdens off an economy. Secretary Clinton intends on selling her infrastructure plan to the Senate in her first 100 days in office to support both unemployed and employed citizens. Even Mr. Trump agrees with what she's saying. To quote, you come in from China, you see these incredible airports, and you land in America. We become a third world country. On the topic of airports, Secretary Clinton will put for ne push for next-gen air transport system, which has been estimated by the FAA to have a benefit to cost ratio of three to one. Once again, benefiting our nation's economy. Secretary Clinton strives not only to put jobs back in infrastructure repair, but in manufacturing. She will implement the clawback proposal, which states how she will be remove tax benefits for companies that intend on shifting jobs overseas. This proposal is accompanied by her plan to strike hard on earning stripping, stripping and corporate invasion. This is the process of selling loans to companies that aren't on U.S. soil. Furthermore, Secretary Clinton calls for trade that will bolster American jobs and increase exports. She is in opposition of the Trans-Pacific Partnership after she saw its outcome after negotiations and is ready to perform reforms on NAFTA. With these statements in mind, Secretary Clinton has effective and innovative steps that will benefit the overall economy. Thank you. Uh, next, Georgiana Manos will present the economic policy proposals of Mr. Trump. Donald Trump strongly believes in free trade, but only when it is practiced fairly and currency is valued properly. One of his main plans to help grow the U.S. economy is to crack down on China's currency manipulation by calculating taxes on imports based on how much a manufacturing country's currency is undervalued. 
A Peterson Institute for International Economic Study found that even a 20% revaluation of Chinese currency would result in the creation of 300,000 to 700,000 American jobs. In order to successfully revalue the Chinese currency, we must elect a president ready to take decisive action. Who better to do that than the man with personal experience in Chinese investment? By contrast, Hillary Clinton favors NAFTA-like job destroyers such as the Trans-Pacific Partnership, better known as the TPP, despite her reversing herself on this recently. The previous failure by politicians to fight for American interests have left us underwriting China's economic rise and America's economic decline. Trump's five-point tax plan will spur job growth and also allow Americans to keep more of what they're earning. He declares that you cannot be for jobs and against those who create them. In contrast to this enthusiasm for American job growth, Hillary Clinton is unable to comprehend that it takes an employer to create an employee, which creates salaries and wages. Trump plans on reducing taxes across the board, especially for working and middle-income Americans, ensuring that the rich will pay their fair share, but that no one will be paying so much that it destroys jobs or undermines our ability to compete, and making our business tax rate more competitive to keep jobs in America. Hillary Clinton, on the other hand, openly admitted during an interview with New York Daily News that her tax proposals will increase taxes on the American people by at least $1 trillion over the next 10 years. Trump also intends to pass the No Oil Producing and Exporting Cartels Act to break OPEC's grip on energy prices by allowing the U.S. to sue OPEC for violating antitrust laws. In simple terms, passing NOPEC would allow the U.S. to bust open the OPEC cartel. Just to give basic knowledge of how much money OPEC actually earns, it earned about $730 billion in net oil export revenues in 2014, and this was actually an 11% decline from its previous year. Donald Trump declares that the passing of NOPEC and his cost-sharing plan intended to be made with Iraq in order to recoup some of the $1.5 trillion we've dropped on liberating Iraq would be a huge leap forward for our country. If you value economic growth by a learned business expert who knows how to negotiate deals, the choice is clear. Thank you. Next, representatives from the two viewpoints will question one another. Sam Gelberg and Eric Wang will represent the Clinton side, while Matt Barroza and Alex Robbins will represent the Trump side. The Clinton side will get to ask the first question. If NAFTA was one of the worst trade deals in history, why was it immediately followed by the longest economic expansion in modern U.S. history, the creation of nearly 3 million new jobs a year for five years, and the biggest rise in real private se sector wages since the 1960s? Uh, well, um, in 2001, we, the GDP of the, of the U.S., for, according to the World Bank, accounted for 31.8% of all global act uh, economic activity. In 2011, it dropped to 21.6%. So obviously, the NAFTA deal did not work out because we dropped, uh, we dropped in the world standings of exporting and importing. Um, if Hillary were to win, what would be her economic goal for the first 100 days? Well, Sec Secretary Clinton plans on sending Congress her infrastructure repair plan and, if time permits, pitch a middle-class tax cut and address the minimal wage issue. How does Trump plan to play? Pan pl plan to pay for his massive $6 trillion tax cut while increasing defense and veteran spending, ending a budget-based military strategy without cutting any of those. Well, he says he wants to audit the Pentagon, um, collect taxes that are unpaid, and to get rid of programs that waste taxpayer dollars. So through all these, if you combine all of these, uh, a huge amount of the budget will be left open for these tax cuts. Um, why is government dependency in the U.S. at an all-time high if the economy is improving? Well, currently companies are paying um, less than they ever have as a share of the GDP to their employees, and the minimum wage is at uh, an unfair low, so uh, people are not able to earn a living wage and are dependent more on the government. Thank you. Thank you. Next, the debaters will consider which candidate will better protect the U.S. national security. Avery Pusey will present the security proposals of Secretary Clinton.
As threats to the well-being of the United States increase, the question must be asked who will protect us. The same question should be asked as the presidential election of 2016 closes in. The fact is that Secretary Clinton is the most experienced in protecting and improving the United States of America. She pushes for a peaceful and effective resolution to all the conflicts that we face as a nation, while at the same time preparing for the worst through motions such as increasing military strength. Former USAID senior official from the Bush administration, Dr. Patrick Cronin, said, the only candidate that has thought through America's challenges, understands policy, has a positive and inclusive version, is smart about the world in which we live, and is ready to be president, and I intend to vote for her, Hillary Clinton. In the 21st century, the United States has seen an increase in terrorist activity. Secretary Clinton will continue to support the movements of increasing intelligence to decipher plots in advance, work with ally nations and their civilians to defeat threatening groups such as Al-Qaeda and ISIS, cutting off, said groups, uh, cutting off said groups' resources, and overall, she will continue to stand up to the terror that they stand for, while still respecting and understanding the immense population of non-threatening ordinary people who have been affected by these groups. To combat the, the threats that face the United States and ultimately the world, Secretary Clinton believes all nations must come together. NATO is one of the most internationally binding treaties to have ever been created. It will be a key in fighting global threats such as terrorism. Secretary Clinton understands the importance importance of allies, whereas Donald Trump doesn't and thus neglects to respect them. For example, in Afghanistan, where NATO has helped increase military capabilities and therefore prevented the recreation of a step shelter for terrorists to establish under. If the United States were to cut off alliances and accordances to Donald Trump's hopes, this would be an ideal time for groups such as ISIS to expand worldwide. Unlike Donald Trump, Secretary Clinton sees the Iran deal for what it is, an effective action against the proliferation of nuclear weapons. Without it, the world would be looking at major threats on vulnerable Israel and a possible increase in threat from terrorist groups. Secretary Clinton looks to prevent the proliferation of all immensely harmful weapons. She has proven herself as an intelligent and reasonable person. In response to the Israeli Hamas rocket attacks against Israel, um, Secretary Clinton helped improve defense with the Iron Dome rocket defense system. We see the world of technology improving every day, becoming a greater potential threat as time passes. Current President Barack Obama sees the threat of cybersecurity to be of utmost importance. Secretary Clinton will work to keep Americans safe. She will agree to the people having their privacy, and as technology changes with time, she will strengthen the laws that defend against cyber attacks. She will treat cyber attacks as any other threat. There will be high-speed broadband implemented for Americans, which is one of the many steps to her plan. Under a President Hillary Clinton, the United States will thrive in safety and innovation, which is a great deal of a foundation to our society. She stands to protect the people, not just our nation and its affairs. Thank you. Next, Izzy Iglesias will present the security proposals of Mr. Trump. Donald Trump will protect America more than Secretary Clinton. First, Trump opposes the Iran nuclear deal, which gave hundreds of millions of dollars to Iran and lifted embargoes against Iran, with the result being that Iran's bomb-making ambitions can now be sped up rather than deterred. The Israeli Prime Minister warned us of this, and the world may yet pay the price for this disastrous agreement. Second, Trump's proposed wall would slow the endless stream of illegal immigrants into our country. Many of these illegal immigrants are criminals and some may be potential terrorists. 40% of the more than 61,000 criminal cases pursued by U.S. attorneys in 2013 were committed by illegal immigrants. In that same year, 198,000 of the 438,000 illegal aliens deported were criminals. The cost of building a wall would be much, much less than the ongoing cost of deportation and the cost could be financed by the billions which we will recover if we re renegotiate the unfavorable NAFTA trade deal signed by Bill Clinton. Secretary Clinton cannot be trusted to enforce current immigration laws vigorously as she is on record as being for open borders, which would allow virtually anyone to enter our country. Third, Trump will increase military spending so that we can rebuild our shrinking Navy to deter conflict in the Persian Gulf and the South China Sea and to develop our military technologies to deter aggression by Russia and North Korea. Despite tough words by Secretary Clinton and President Obama, Syria is on year five of a horrible civil war. Libya is in turmoil, Russia bullies the Ukraine, and ISIS is unbowed. Secretary Clinton risked, risked U.S. national security by using personal email servers. By contrast, Trump will make our world, and especially our, na our nation, safer. Thank you.
Next, Owen Toomey and Sam Gilbert representing the Clinton side, and Alex Robbins and Matt Barroza representing the Trump side will question one another. The Trump side will get the first question. How does Mrs. Clinton plan to deal with domestic terrorism and criminal illegal aliens if she supports an open borders policy? Secretary Clinton does not support an open border policy and uh, is very proud of our Border Patrol and all the service that they do for our country. And she plans on properly vetting anyone coming into the country and having them go through the full citizenship application process. So, uh, does uh, Mr. Trump support boots on the ground in the Middle East? And if he does not, how does he intend to deal with ISIS in a strategy different from that of President Obama's? Well, um, Donald Trump favors a coalition with Arab allies. This way we can replace the existing, uh, we can replace whoever's in power there with an existing culture that they share. Um, on top of that, he doesn't want to give a, like a full comprehensive plan because he doesn't want to give the enemy um, the exact plan that we will use. How will Mrs. Clinton deal with cybersecurity? Cybersecurity is, of course, of the utmost importance. Um, with changing technology comes a requirement on behalf of the federal government to be able to adapt to new threats. Um, Secretary Clinton is just the person to do this. With her many years of experience as a public servant, she understands the need to make security strong but flexible, and Secretary Clinton will have an FBI division constantly monitoring and searching for threats against our cybersecurity. Um, uh, uh, if, for, for the wall, would you give it, uh, oh, sorry, uh, Mexico said that they won't pay for the wall. Uh, for the wall, how will uh, Donald Trump be able to pay it for it and enforce it? Um, well, like one of our answers before, um, he wants to audit the Pentagon, limit government bureaucracy, collect ta uh, overdue taxes, and, and get rid of un unneeded government programs that waste taxpayer dollars. So that leaves a certain amount of the budget to build the wall. On top of that, we have a trade deficit with uh, Mexico, and he wants to, to fix that trade deficit and, and, by fixing it, collect more money to pay for the wall. Thank you. Sophie Stein will now review the key issues from the Clinton perspective. Today we are posed with many pressing issues, and it is clear that Hillary Clinton is the most qualified candidate in the race to be President of the United States. In terms of the economy, Trump has proposed to crack down on China's currency manipulation and states this will create 300,000 to 700,000 new jobs. Numerous economists have shown that a stronger yuan would simply shift manufacturing to other low-cost producers such as Bangladesh or Vietnam, and the, and the United States would still be uncompetitive. While an appreciation of the yuan against the dollar would indeed reduce the U.S. trade deficit with China, it is unlikely to have any effect on job creation. Hillary Clinton does not support TPP, and in terms of NAFTA, this trade deal was immediately followed by the longest economic expansion in modern U.S. history. The creation of nearly three million new jobs over a course of five years and the biggest rise in real private sector wages since the 1960s, it has permitted much freer trade than ever before. And as a result, trade has quadrupled, foreign investment has more than tripled, helping manufacturing, insurance, and banking companies. Trump's team also claims that Hillary does not understand that to create an employee, you need an employer. And Trump's five-point tax plan, or plan shows enthusiasm to create new jobs. In contrast to Trump, it is important to note that Hillary will deeply increase infrastructure projects to generate about 10 million jobs, while Mr. Trump's plan will actually cost Americans about 3.4 million jobs. So the statement made by Mr. Trump's team is not only false, but unwarranted, according to most economists. Now I move on to national security. Trump's website calls for increasing the size of the military, more ships, planes, troops, and ending the sequester for defense spending. First, we will be breaking the deal with Congress to enforce budgetary discipline deals, and our entire spending deals will be scrapped. Budgets will, will grow out of control, and the deficit and debt will be even harder to control than they are now. Second, there is no rhyme or reason to his plans. Increasing the size of our conventional forces has to serve a purpose other than bigger must be better. Our military has been downsized to some extent, but this is only to reflect the new realities of fighting smaller wars and unconventional en enemies. In terms of the wall, which has been brought up by 
which has been brought up, Mr. Trump has released no formal plans or logistics. And as we have already constructed a wall in 2006, it has been shown time and time again to fail and we should not waste our time nor Mexico's. Uh, Clinton has proposed a comprehensive refugee plan with a focus of admitting the most vulnerable, like, like uh, persecuted religious minorities or those who have been br brutalized, like the uh, dizzy women, as well as families. Rick Scott has made false accusations about letting refugees in with no vetting. Secretary Clinton thoroughly plan, uh, plans to thoroughly vet all refugees. In addition, Secretary Clinton will put undocumented people on a road to citizenship. In terms of emails, the FBI has undergone an intense and thorough search and have found not a shred of proof that show that these emails have put our national security at risk. When push comes to shove, Secretary Clinton is clearly better to protect the security and national economy and economy of our great nation. Matt Fleming will now review the key issues from the Trump perspective. The United States is slipping into irreversible decline and only one of our presidential candidates has a chance to reverse it. It's very simple. Clinton will raise taxes, increase regulation, and kill the coal industry. Trump will cut taxes, decrease regulation, and leverage Americans' energy resources to create new jobs and growth. Clinton will increase corporate taxes, already the highest in the world, to fund her wild agenda of wasteful liberal programs of wealth redistribution. By further choking our already overregulated, overtaxed businesses, Clinton will change more jobs overseas. In contrast, Trump will reduce taxes, which will encourage investment in business formation, boost spending, and generate real growth and increase op job opportunity. On trade, Donald Trump will renegotiate every bad trade deal the Clintons have ever gotten us into. While Secretary Clinton may, not have, may have more experience in the White House, that doesn't necessarily mean it is good experience. She doesn't know the difference between a good trade deal and a bad one. NAFTA, which she lobbied for her husband in the 1990s, has caused our trade with Mexico to go from a surplus to a $60 billion trade deficit. The Clintons promised us a 200,000 net job gain from NAFTA. Instead, we've lost over 850,000 jobs, according to research from the Economic Policy Institute. Yet in her book, Living History, Hillary Clinton described NAFTA as reaping the benefits, not the burdens of globalization. That may be true for Mexico and Canada, but certainly not for the US. NAFTA, though, is not the only disastrous trade deal proposed by Clinton. As Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton helped draft the South Korea bilateral agreement, describing it as cutting edge. The only thing the agreement cut was 75,000 American jobs, according to the Economic Policy Institute, rather than the 70,000 gain promised by the White House. In fact, the only trade surplus the Clintons seem to be able to run is accepting money from big business businesses and foreign corporate interests, while fielding requests for White House and State Department favors. Although Donald Trump doesn't have experience in the White House, he does happen to be an extremely successful businessman who understands how our economy runs. He, unlike Sick Clinton, understands that taxes need to spread to everyone and that there are no employees without employers. Donald Trump will allow both small and large businesses to not only run, but to grow. On national security, Mr. Trump believes that it is currently unsafe to accept Syrian refugees. Secretary Clinton ensures that they will all be properly vetted before coming into our country. But many of these refugees, who are primarily adult males, don't have any information to give us due to the current state of their country, making proper vetting impossible. Donald Trump will ensure that until we solve the turmoil in the Middle East, which Secretary Clinton and President Obama let grow, we cannot put our citizens in danger by allowing potential terrorists to come right into our country. Thank you. Next, Owen Toomey and Sophie Stein representing the Clinton side, and Matt Fleming and Alex Robbins representing the Trump side will question one another. The Clinton side will get the first question. If China is aggressively devaluing its currency to undermine us, why has it risen 24% against the dollar in the past 10 years? Um, that's the current market value, but in the long run, it has fallen due to the dollar. And that's um, Hillary Clinton let in five Syrian refugees and a translator who were later charged with terrorism-related crimes. How, can we, how could we properly vet Syrian refugees? Secretary Clinton would like to accept as many as 65,000 Syrian refugees in accordance with her humane immigration plans, just like other immigrants as well. As those applying for refugee status, each refugee will be thoroughly vetted. All refugees and immigrants will, be, will benefit from Secretary Clinton's naturalization policies and successfully integrate all around the U.S. Since 1980, the U.S. has invited millions of refugees, including hundreds of thousands from the Middle East, and not one has committed an act of terrorism in the U.S. Any and all arguments which state Syrian refugees will have allegiances to ISIS 
have a critical logical fallacy that is constantly overlooked. Refugee settlement counters ISIS narratives. Okay. How, do you, how does uh, Mr. Trump plan to pay for the massive $6 trillion tax cut while increasing defense and veterans, veteran spending without cutting any other major programs? Well, Mr. Trump has clearly proven himself a great negotiator, and he's going to start by renegotiating every terrible trade deal that the Clintons have gotten us into, including NAFTA and bilateral North Korea, uh, South Korean trade agreement. And he's going to start by that, which will, which will increase economic and uh, will bring prosperity to our country. Um, contrary to one of your previous answers, Mrs. Clinton, in a speech to Brazilian bankers, has support in open borders policy. Um, how would she prevent another terrorist attack like the one that happened in Benghazi, which killed Navy SEALs and an American ambassador from occurring on U.S. soil at a number of, or at another embassy? Uh, without seeing the entire speech, it's impossible for us to say whether or not she truly supported open borders. In that case, uh, the actual sentence that was uh, exposed did not uh, really argue either way. Uh, now, we've learned from past incidents, and Secretary Clinton believes that the security of our people abroad is the number one priority. Secretary Clinton plans on maintaining a cutting-edge military that is working without allies to defeat ISIS and dismantle the global terror networks. Through hardening defenses and launching an intelligence surge, Secretary Clinton will make sure America is a safe nation, both here and abroad. Thank you. Owen Toomey, representing Secretary Clinton, and Dana Krause, representing Mr. Trump, will now make closing statements. Ladies and gentlemen, on November 8th, you have the choice between the experienced career public servant Hillary Rodham Clinton and the ill-tempered, unprepared Donald J. Trump. Secretary Clinton believes in helping the economy by strengthening the working poor with increasing the minimum wage. By giving the working poor more purchasing power, we will boast the economy from the bottom up. Instead of just helping out Mr. Trump and his pals at the top of the economic pyramid with his trumped-up economic plan. Not only that, Secretary Clinton would join the ranks of half a dozen former presidents that stepped into the presidency with a basket full of knowledge on foreign policy from her time as Secretary of State. As Secretary, she clocked more travel miles, making her more knowledgeable about the world than any previous Secretary of State. She believes in protecting us by helping support our allies abroad. We are not alone, and she understands the need for allies, especially within the Middle East. Protecting Israel is, of course, a priority, and with their help and the help of Muslim nations throughout the Middle East, we will be able to effectively destroy ISIS. Remember, we are stronger together. Thank you. Today, we have come here as citizens and potential voters to consider the issues of the economy and national security. Mr. Trump believes in boosting the economy in three major ways. First, he will execute an eight-year plan to el eliminate our $19 trillion in national debt. Next, he plans to revamp the tax system by decreasing the top tax rate by 6.6%, creating benefits to all socioeconomic classes. This differs greatly from the plan of Secretary Clinton, who plans to raise taxes on the wealthy, thereby discouraging prosperity here in the United States. Lastly, he plans to crack down on Chinese currency manipulation to create hundreds of thousands of jobs. On national security, Mr. Trump would protect the nation and its allies by opposing the Iran nuclear deal due to the risk of the money going toward nuclear weaponry. Here at home, his wall along the U.S.-Mexico border would keep potential danger out of the states and keep jobs saved for hardworking, tax-paying Americans. Under a President Trump, we can rebuild the United States to keep up with the risks presented in our modern war-torn world. We need a president with hands-on economic experience and the stamina to protect our homes. Under President Trump, we can make America great again. Thank you. In addition to the debaters whom you heard, we would like to thank Katerina Vates, William Kelly, Izzy Iglesias for the assistance with research and argumentation, timers Chloe Secofico and Zach Ross, and program assistants Abby Johnson, Ali McCauley, and Alexa Plancher. Thank you for coming to Cold Spring Harbor High School Presidential Debate. <laughs>